Hypnosis to Change Your Life with Dr. Steve G. Jones. So Steve, can you explain the different stages of consciousness? Sure. Uh, we go through all of the stages every day of our lives. And uh, the, the top one where we're fully aware, where we are right now, we're mm -hmm. fully aware of what's going on, is called beta. That's when we're in full awakening consciousness. We're aware of what's going on. Uh, we're interactive. We're not daydreaming or anything. That's beta. Below that is alpha. Now, the inter interesting thing about alpha is that it's the it's the lightest state of hypnosis or stage of hypnosis, state or stage. I use those words interchangeably, but it's also virtually indetectable. You can be an alpha without realizing it. Have you ever uh, driven somewhere and not remembered the, the drive? Definitely. Okay. That's an example of being an alpha. A lot of people do that. It's a common experience. And you, and you think, well, how did I get here? I, I'm here. I don't remember the drive. Usually it's because you're doing something that's so routine for you that you don't need to be fully alert. You don't need to be wide awake on full alert. So you power down to what we call alpha. In alpha, you are more suggestible. So that's the, the beauty of it. So it's actually the lightest state of hypnosis, but it's virtually indetectable. So now we have beta, full awakening consciousness, alpha, mm -hmm. which we can slip into and mm -hmm. out of without realizing it. So another example would be, um, you know, if you're vacuuming or, or showering or reading a book or just waking up or just going to sleep, you can go into alpha. Your brain will kind of slow down into alpha without you realizing it. Great. So. And if I were to want to pick up on that, how would I notice if I were driving somewhere and, and wanted to go through those routine things but catch myself going to alpha? Great question. And usually it's it's not going to happen because because you're just, unless you're able to hook yourself up to mon a monitoring device oh. to figure out which state you're at. Uh, that's a that's very great, very good question because a lot of people want to, to know, well, when am I in hypnosis? When am I in that hypnotic state? Because it's so important, the difference between beta and alpha, because full awakening consciousness, not very helpful in hypnosis. You're not mm -hmm. programmable. In alpha, you are programmable because you've slipped down into that state, so it'd be nice to know when you're in it. But by virtue of just lying down, closing your eyes, and relaxing, you do go into alpha. Now below that, we have theta, which is uh, a state you'd normally enter when you're, when you're sleeping, and then we have delta, which would be deep sleep. Mm -hmm. But f interestingly enough, the stages of wakefulness and sleep, if we look at the scale of that, going from beta to alpha, theta, delta, is the same as the, the stages of wakefulness and sleep. So the stages of hypnosis, going into hypnosis, are the same as the stages of wakefulness versus sleep. We don't have a separate hypnotic scale. It's interesting. Yeah, so that means that we all go through the stages of hypnosis every day. When, you're, when you just wake up, if you, an alarm goes off, you're in beta, mm -hmm. wide awake. Uh, you, you hit the snooze button, you drift off, you start to go down to alpha, maybe you've gone to theta and delta. Well, you're in hypnosis. Anytime you're in alpha or lower, you're in hypnosis. And then uh, the alarm goes off again, you get up, you uh, get ready, and you start driving your car. Well, you're in beta the whole time you're getting ready, probably. Mm -hmm. And when you're driving your car, you can go back to alpha again. Like we talked mm -hmm. about with you not remembering the drive, that's happened yeah. for a lot of people. Get to, let's say we'll create a scenario for someone, they get to an office, uh, they start interacting with people. Suddenly, they're on high alert. They're in beta again. Let's say they they go to their desk and they they go down to alpha again because they're doing things they're used to. And then at night, when they go home and go to sleep, they go down to theta and delta and cycle between the between the two. And they wake back up and do it again the next day. So they've been in hypnosis a lot of their that. lives, right? The only difference between being in it naturally and being in it with a hypnotherapist are two things. Number one, the hypnotherapist causes them to go there mm -hmm. by the words they use, hypnotic words. And number two, powerful programming suggestions are given during that time. So the person's being given suggestions for change. Otherwise, it's just like you would experience it in your everyday life. And would it be just as effective if it was, if it was a recording of you? It would be, uh, and I do have recordings that I, that I have available on my website, and I also make recordings for clients who come to see me. So absolutely, a recording of a session is just as powerful as the session. As long as it's using the same hypno hypnotic terms. Right, exactly. Now if, you have, now if you're comparing a session 
uh, versus uh, uh, a generic recording uh, from a website. The generic recording from a website is fine, and I sell a lot of those. I have them available because sometimes people don't want to come in for a session for whatever reason. So, But when you compare that to a session, the session is going to be more powerful because it's individualized. Mm -hmm. And a recording of that session will be just as powerful because it's the essence of it anyway. It's the wording. Hypnosis to change your life with Dr. Steve G. Jones.